Season 2 of Doom Patrol is closing in on us. I thought it would be a great time to talk about the new character, Dorothy Spinner. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Comic Book Nostalgia. I'm CB Nostalgia, and we got a little update on Season 2 of Doom Patrol. But first, I wanted to remind everybody, if you're looking for your place for all your comic book news, rumors, and reviews, all while looking for the positive and good in those characters we love, make sure you hit that like button and press subscribe. Well, we're closing in on Season 2 of Doom Patrol, which is just about to drop on HBO Max and DC Universe. And at the end of last year, we got introduced to a new character, Dorothy Spinner. If you're familiar with Dorothy Spinner in the comics, you know what this means for the show. But many people are not very familiar with her or her powers. So, I thought it would be a great time to break down who Dorothy Spinner is in the comics, talk about her powers a little bit, and how that may impact the show. So let's dive into some Doom Patrol history. The character of Dorothy Spinner made her first appearance in Doom Patrol Volume 2, Number 14, back in 1988. But she was pretty much a background character until she was made a full member a few issues later. She was actually created by Paul Kepperberg and is obviously part of DC Comics. Now, in the comic book, Dorothy has kind of a sad past, even though she is technically the chief's daughter. She was given up by her mother for adoption when she was a baby and was adopted by a Midwestern couple. Now you may notice from the pictures or even some of the trailers, Dorothy suffers from a facial deformity that in the comics gave her the appearance of an ape, complete with hairy arms. Now, because of this, Dorothy was kept away from most people and lived most of her life in isolation and played with her imaginary friends. Now this is where her powers come in because she has one of the weirdest power sets ever. She is actually able to make her imaginary friends come to life. And these aren't regular imaginary friends like a talking squirrel. These are all kind of weird. Now, she has tons of them, but I thought I'd break down quite a few of them for you while we had a minute just to get you prepped up for this season that we're going to see. So let's just run down the list. First up, Damn All. He's actually made of newspaper crossword puzzles and financial reports, and obviously is a little strange looking. Darling Come Home. She actually wears an apron, and her head is a picture of a light bulb. She's actually Damn All's wife. Then there's her son, Flying Robert, who looks like a ghost baby balloon sort of thingy. These aren't even the weird ones. Next up, the Inky Boys. These are three people completely made of ink. Next up is Pretty Miss Dot. Now, this is a weird one. She has lipstick fingers, a helmet over her head covered with lips and curlers, a sweater with a big D on it, and shoes that have skulls stitched into them. The next one is the Vegans. Now, these are three can-can girls in tribal masks, but what makes them unique is they all have deer-type legs. There's also Jolly Hanger. Now this character is completely made up of coat hangers. So something completely out there we might actually get to see. As far as her imaginary friends go, I don't think there's any I like more than Doom Force. Now Doom Force was a one shot that was created by Grant Morrison and was supposed to be a cross between Doom Patrol and X-Force. Members of Doom Force include Spinner, obviously Dorothy, Flux, Shasta the Living Mountain, The Scratch, who was a parody of Wolverine, and crying boy. Now, there are a lot of other ones, and some of them are really hard to find some visual references for. Polly Polly Tinker Boy, Cowboy Doll Bookface, Rockabye Baby, Baby Twig Lady, All the Time in the World, Paddle the Sky, Darkest Morning, and Heart of Ice. But one I highly suspect we will see this season, at least based on some of the production notes. And that's The Candle Maker. Now, he actually has an external existence almost as a collection of thoughts that exist. It's kind of weird. Now, it is a weird looking villain, and it has a candelabra for a head, and it's actually supposed to be a manifestation of the world's fear of nuclear holocaust. Now, the reason I think he's going to be the main villain is Dorothy's psychological vulnerability has really made her the perfect target for the candle maker. He is kind of this malignant egregore force removed from our plane of existence eons ago. And now he's trying to come back through Dorothy's psychic ability. Now in the comics, one day a group of boys was actually teasing Dorothy, which is something she put up with regularly. The candle maker appeared in her mind, and when she wished that one of the boys was dead, he happily obliged. And the next day, the boy was found completely disemboweled and crucified in a field. In the comics, Dorothy then would spend the rest of her life trying to block the candle maker to the deepest part of her mind so he wouldn't come back. Obviously, there might be some unique imaginary friends that aren't in the comics that make it into the show. This is pretty hard to predict, but we'll have to wait and see. In any case, I hope you learned a lot about Dorothy's imaginary friends, but I didn't know if I left some of them out that some of you big-time Doom Patrol fans might school me on. Let me know in the comments below. So, what do you guys think of Dorothy Spinner's powers? 
and how do you suspect they'll manifest on screen? Quite honestly, I can't think of a character that has a more perfect power set to be added to this show. It allows the narration and story to be pretty much driven in any direction. Not that this was a problem for Doom Patrol. So what do you guys think? Are you ready for season two of Doom Patrol? And are you ready to get to know Dorothy Spinner? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you press like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.